for debts other than my own. Christopher Haywood. Rhoda Haywood. Rhoda, why do you bother reading those? It's the first place where guys announce they're single again. I'm just trying out their names. Not responsible for debts other than my own. Victor Christian. Rhoda Christian. <laughs> my mother would kill me. <laughs> oh, guess who? It's Dylan. Mm. Mary, I'll get it. Let's see how long it takes her to remind us we're not married. <laughs> oh. Am I intruding? I don't want to butt in on any uh, single gals type chatter. Four seconds. Hi. <laughs> Mary, I've come to impose upon your friendship just a little bit. May I? Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, this is a little composition that Bess wrote in English class. And Mary, you must read it. I must have your reaction to it. Uh, now? Oh, Mary, do you mind? No, I can put my hands in meatloaf anytime. <laughs> See, I, I want the reaction of someone whose uh, opinion I respect, who is also witty and perceptive. Then you want me to read it. <laughs> I don't think that'll be necessary, Rhoda. Well, Mary, now, I don't want you to be influenced by me, but really, this is so clever and insightful. Uh, but you don't want that to influence me, right? It, right, right. Ah, very good. Oh, do you think so? Oh, well, no, that's what the teacher wrote up here at the top. Very good. <laughs> Did you notice that A right there next to very ah. good? Will you look at that A? That is some A. So big and red and rosy. <laughs> Isn't that a cute title, Mary? The Care and Feeding of Parents. Yeah, <laughs> it is. <laughs> Isn't that first sentence funny? <laughs> <laughs> Phil, it's, it's really uh, difficult to read when someone is watching your eyes go back and forth. <laughs> <Sorry. clears throat> what was that? Uh, what was that? <laughs> oh, well, this, it really is terrific. That certainly does have a flair. Oh, Mary, do you really think so? Yeah. <laughs> I do so hate imposing on you. I feel as you weren't imposing. Well, I uh, see, uh, the, the imposing hasn't begun. Oh? You see, don't you think this would make an excellent article for one of those teenage-type magazines? Why don't you send it in to one of them? Well, Mary, that's what I... Mary, you know the Snyder Publishing Company, don't you? Yeah, I should. They own the building I work in. Oh, do they? <laughs> That's why it's called the Snyder Building, Phyllis. Oh, well, then you know how they uh, publish all kinds of uh, books and magazines for children. And uh, I thought, in particular, teen topics. Mm -hmm. I thought that this uh, uh, might make a perfect article for them. You aren't by any chance going to suggest that I take the composition into Snyder Publishing, are you? Well, I just thought they wouldn't leave it lying around unread if you brought it to them. After all, you're a TV associate producer. Yeah, but Phyllis, I don't know anyone at Snyder Publishing. Well, surely somebody in your office knows somebody down there to give them this. Not that I know of. Only Mr. Grant. I think he knows Mr. Snyder, but that's... Well, then, it. Mary! Oh, no. No, Phyllis, I am not going to ask my boss to take the homework assignment of a little girl, a very nice little girl, you into... Right. You're right. I am imposing. I, I had just thought that. It, oh, it's so hard to explain to people who haven't reproduced. <laughs> Why do I say things like that? No one knows. <laughs> getting out of here for it. Alienate everybody completely. Oh, Phyllis, come on. You're not alienating everybody. Speak for yourself, Mary. <laughs> Phyllis, wait. Come on. Give me the paper. I don't know. Maybe there's something I can do. Oh, Mary. You're just so... Mary. Mary. Yeah. Well, let's just wait and see how Mary I am, okay? Oh. <laughs> of course. I know you'll do the right thing. Say the right words. And uh, any small advance is perfectly acceptable, whatever the going rate is. God bless you, Mary. <laughs> you know, Mayor, it's a joy watching you stand up to Phyllis. Oh, come on, Rhoda. So she asked me to do a little favor. Oh, Mary. Yeah. I just, just a thought. Uh, maybe you should type it up so it'll look more professional. God bless you, Mary. <laughs> Murray, you know anyone who works downstairs at Snyder Publishing? 
Well, the same people who clean this office every night clean those offices. I think the guy's name is Smitty. Thanks, anyway. I know somebody down there. Oh? Who? Secretary to the big boss. Cheryl Weston. We went out quite a bit together. Wait a minute. Weston, Weston, Weston. Can't seem to find her. Maybe she's in the yellow pages. <laughs> oh, here she is under secretaries. Oh, well, Ted, would you mind if I called her? I've got something here to submit to Snyder. Oh, not at all. This is her private office number. You may use my name. Oh, no, that won't be necessary. It's just nice to know her name to sort of break the ice. Thanks. Hello, Miss Weston? Well, hi. Uh, I'm Mary Richards, your neighbor from upstairs at WJM-TV. <laughs> well, every day I just uh, zip right past your floor on the elevator and I, I feel like I know you. <laughs> M Mary Richards. Right. Well, uh, <clears throat> Miss Weston, I have a really cute article here that I thought would be just great for teen topics. And I was wondering if... You, uh, well, yeah, I know I could uh, mail it in. Well, uh, perhaps I should speak to Mr. Snyder then. Uh, let me have it. Uh, ju just a moment, please. Cheryl, this is Ted Baxter. I'd just like you to know the young lady you're talking to is a personal friend of mine. Hello? <laughs> Hello? I should have read this note beside her name. What's it say, Ted? Never mind. <laughs> Sorry, Mayor. Murray, you think I could get Mr. Grant to read this? I mean, he might just like it and say to himself, hey, I think I'll toddle on down to see my pal Hank Snyder with this. Well, I don't know. It's gonna be tough to get him to read it, and tougher to get him to toddle. <laughs> Morning, anything vital for me to read today? Thank you. It worked out rather nicely, didn't it? Once in a while, things just fall right into your lap. <laughs> I would like to speak to whoever is responsible for this piece of paper, which I hold in my hand. Uh, that, that would be me. I just um, thought that if you had it in your hand, it, it might occur to you to read it. You're right. I did read it. Now, what do I do with it? Well, you, uh, how did you like it, by the way? You didn't write this, did you? No, no, I just uh, typed it up. Good, it stinks. Mr. Grant, it was written by a 12-year-old girl. Oh, in that case, it's excellent. Oh, do you really think so? It's Phyllis's daughter's English composition. And you want me to put her on the news staff? You figure she'd write well for Ted? No, Mr. Grant, I just thought that if you liked it, it just might pop into your head to take it down to your friend Hank Snyder down at uh, Snyder uh, Public. But I can uh, see it didn't pop into your head to do that. As I recall, this is two paragraphs. Wouldn't that make a rather brief magazine article? Uh, well, uh, funny. It didn't uh, look so brief in longhand. Mary, Hank Snyder owes me a favor. Well, perfect. Not perfect. Five years ago, I started working on a novel. You did? Mm-hmm. Right now, it's about this thick. When it's this thick, I'm going to barge into Hank's office, big as life, and say, this is it, Hank. Publish it. Now, Mary, you can't expect me to use up a favor this thick for one this thin? No, I, I don't. Forget it. I just did. Good. <laughs> Well, I think I've done everything I possibly could have done. I have typed up the composition, groveled at the feet of Mr. Snyder's secretary, made a fool of myself in, in front of Mr. Grant. What more could I have done? You did everything anybody could expect, Mary. And more. Right. So why is it that Phyllis is going to make me feel I haven't done enough? <laughs> Phyllis, I tried, but Mr. Grant just wasn't as enthusiastic as we were. Why not? Didn't he see the grade on it? Well, no, Phil, you had me type it, remember? Oh, well, why did he think it was good enough? No, he didn't say it wasn't good enough. Uh, well, he said that it was a little short. Yes, he's right, it is short. You tell him that Bess hasn't begun to explore the possibilities of her theme. No, uh, Phyllis, the thing is, 
Hank Snyder owes Mr. Grant a favor. Mr. Grant wants to use the favor to get a book published. A book? Yeah. Phyllis, Lars told me to come up and drop a hint for you to make some dinner. Tell him I'll be right down, dear. Okay. I offered to make him something, but he doesn't like jelly. <laughs> well, then give him the rest of this banana and tell him I'll be right along. Oh, Beth, you know that little composition uh, about coping with parents that Miss Delgado gave you that big red A on? Well, sure. Well, a Mary has taken a great interest in it. And she and her employer, Mr. Grant, think that it can be a book. Phyllis, I did not say a book. book. Well, it, 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 they feel it needs a trifle more padding, a few chapters. Phyllis, I don't know if I can write a whole book. Well, all we have to do is elaborate on the theme that parents have a lot to cope with. The theme was that kids have a lot to cope with. Well, uh, whatever. <laughs> Phyllis, will you just hold on a minute? Hello. Hello. Phyllis, I did not say I could get a book published. I doubt if I can. In fact, I'm sure I can't. Well, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. The important thing is for best to do it. Bye. Goodbye. <laughs> well, well. Sounds like you've been standing up to Phyllis again. Oh, well, they'll never finish it. I mean, a book is a book. It's long, it's thick, it's got small print on both sides of the pages. Mary, we're talking about Phyllis here. Before this thing is finished, you're going to be out there in Hollywood selling the rights to the screenplay. Hand typing it. Dean, take other 10 second commercial. Go away. I'm only sticking my head in long enough to tell you I'm leaving. Oh, Rhoda, no, that's okay. Stay. Just Phyllis, she is driving me crazy with that book. You know, she called me seven times at the office yesterday. I couldn't get any work done. I had to bring it home and do it on the weekend. You get tough. Look at me. Do you think Phyllis would ever dare ask me for a favor? Never. <laughs> she respects me too much. In fact, uh, she respects me so much she can't stand me. Oh. Hello. Oh, hiya, Bess. Well, honey, I tell you, I... Okay, just, just one sentence, then. Well, that's kind of cute, yeah. Well, it, it, uh, it's clear to me. Well, no, I'm sorry, Bess, I can't come down, dear. I... Phyllis, will you get off the extension? I just told <laughs> Bess, and I told you before, I cannot come down, I am busy. I'll talk to you later. Goodbye. There. I told her no. Now, don't you feel better? Not really. Poor Bess. She had a cute idea to begin with. It's... I'll handle no, it. No, no. No. That doesn't. I want you to watch this for being firm. <laughs> Hello. No, Phyllis, I cannot keep picking up this phone every five seconds. Will that do it? All right. I'll be right down. <laughs> I want you to watch how firmly I am walking down to Phyllis's. <laughs> Bess, are you uh, thinking? Or are you staring at your fish? Both. I wish I could reach them so I could make them understand I'm keeping them in there for their own good. I I I'm not following you, dear. Well, I'd like to set them free, but if I put them in a lake or a river, the pollution would kill them. So they're better off here in relatively clean tap water. But they probably hate me because they think I'm keeping them prisoner. Fish don't hate, dear. <laughs> Hi. Oh, Mary. Hi, Aunt Mary. What uh, seems to be the problem? Well, uh, everything was going just fine, and then uh, we hit a little snag. Oh, how far did you get? Oh, well, uh, actually had a little disagreement over how the dedication should read. The dedication? You mean you finished already? Oh, no, no. We haven't gotten past the dedication. <laughs> Mary, which sounds better to you? Now, I want you to be honest. I'm not going to tell you which one of us did which. To Charlie Brown, Snoopy, Linus, and especially Lucy. Or to dedicated parents everywhere. Uh, I think I, I like the one about Charlie Brown. Yeah. Mary, could I speak to you, please? <laughs> All right, if I take a little break. A break? This isn't work, Bess. A break from fun? Bess? Sweetheart, aren't you enjoying writing this book? Oh, sure I am. It's fun. Really, it is. 
I just felt I needed a little break while you two were talking. Oh, well, go ahead and take your little break, dear. While she's taking her little break, I'll just rough in the first few chapters. I know how her mind works. Uh, so, Mary, if there's nothing else, so... Uh... No, 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 Phyllis. I shouldn't have uh, barged in and interrupted the way I did. In summary, Councilman Carter has this to say. We must take action soon against the appealing wiretapping policies of government agencies. That's appalling. <laughs> Oh, against the appalling wiretapping policies. Oh, I see. Then I disapprove. Then I better frown instead of smile. Hi. Oh, hiya, Bess. How are you? Fine. How are you, Mr. Slaughter? Well, I guess I'm fine, too. Uh, can I help you? Well, I'd like to see Mary. Is she here? Well, she'll be right back. Why don't you just sit over here at a desk? Thank you. You're a writer, aren't you? Uh-huh. In a way, uh, I write for Ted Baxter on the 6 o'clock news. I guess that makes me a comedy writer. I'm kind of a writer, too. Oh, that's right. You know, I really liked your little story about parents. Thank you. Do you enjoy writing? Oh. Uh, well, now, let's see. Uh, I enjoy getting paid for my writing. I enjoy finishing my writing. I enjoy reading my writing. But I don't think I really enjoy the writing part of my writing. <laughs> I think I know what you mean. Bess, hi. What oh. are you doing here? Just thought I'd say hello. Well, how nice. Uh, does Phyllis know where you are? Well, no. I'm supposed to be on a botany field trip. But they called it off because it's a bad day for outdoor breathing. And, well, Aunt Shaw had to go to the orthodontist four blocks from here. So I asked her mother to drop me off. Oh. Aunt Mary. Can I talk to you? Well, sure. Um, uh, why don't we, uh, we use Mr. Grant's office. It's more private. Why don't you just, uh, sit down and, uh, I'll drop these off and be right back. I know you, don't I? Yeah. You're not one of my grandchildren, are you? <laughs> no. Oh, uh, Mr. Grant, I'm sorry, but uh, we had to use your office. Uh, believe me, it's very important. Important? Very. I understand. <laughs> so, uh, what do you want to talk about? It's about the book. Oh, yeah, how's it coming? I wish we weren't doing it. Well, Bess, the, uh, the other day you said you were enjoying doing it. Well, I was. I wanted to do it for Phyllis. I wanted to be proud of me. Oh, honey, she is proud of you. I'd do just about anything for her. And since she wanted a book so bad, well, I figured I'd try and write a book. But Aunt Mary, I'm only 12. Not finished yet? Oh, uh, no. I understand. <laughs> So, Mary, how's tricks? Fine, fine. Tricks are fine. Hi, yeah. Lou. Right on time. Lou Grant, this is Mr. Mitchell from Universal Mills. Mr. Mitchell. Well, they uh, tell me you're going to try to convince me to sink half our television budget into your uh, news program. That's right. Uh, why don't we just go into your office, Lou? Uh, well, Sam, uh, unfortunately, it's occupied momentarily. Why don't we just sit down right here? Murray, can I have your chair? Sure, Lou. Uh. Well, Bess, I think we both know that the reason Phyllis is so involved in writing this book is because of you, because she loves you. I know, and I love her, and that's why I don't want to quit writing the book. Well, she's enjoying it so much. You know, for a person with Phyllis's intelligence and creativity, being just a plain housewife can get pretty humdrum. Yeah, but I think if, 
If you tell her that you don't want to write the book, she'll just bounce right into some other activity that won't be so hard on you. She is pretty resilient. Yeah. <laughs> well, will you tell her then? Well, Beth, sweetie, I, I could, but um, don't you think it'd be better coming from you? Well, maybe we could tell her together. Okay. Oh, good. Because when we're alone, Phyllis has this tendency to rewrite me. <laughs> to Grindstone. I wrote a whole chapter for you today, but see if this sounds like you. Phyllis, look who's here. Aunt Mary brought me home. Oh, Mary. Hi. Gosh, I sure could use a cookie. Excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> Mary, how nice. Come and sit down. Tell me all about the outside world. You know, it's true. Writing is lonely. Uh, Phyllis, Bess asked me to talk to you. When? Well, she came to see me today. Oh, to your office? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, Phyllis, um... Well, I guess the best thing to do is just uh, come out and uh, say that Bess doesn't want to work on the book anymore. Well, fine, we won't work on the book. You're, you're not upset? That she doesn't want to work on the book? Yeah. No. I just wish she could have told me herself. Well, see, the thing is, she was afraid that you'd be disappointed in her. Disappointed? Oh, Mary, well, that's silly. She knows I've always told her I only want the best for her. Oh, and that's exactly what I said to her, too. Well, if she doesn't want to write, she doesn't have to write. Beth! That's I just silly. knew you'd feel that way. Well, of course. That's it. Yes, Phyllis? Best, dear. If you don't want to write, you don't have to write. I just put the book away, and we just won't talk anything more about it. Oh, good. Oh, Beth. Well, can I do my homework now? Of course. <laughs> you can't push a child to do something she doesn't want to do. Always remember that, Mary. I'll, uh, I'll try. This? What's that, dear? It's nothing. May I see it? It's just a painting I did in this Brewer's class. Why didn't you show this to me? I forgot. Look at this, Mary. <laughs> Oh, Bess, that's really terrific. You know, I I bought a poster last week that wasn't half as good as this. I mean, the colors, it... You know, Bess, if you wanted to, I bet you could even sell these things. I mean, if you really, you know, wanted to, uh... <laughs> you see how hard it is. And you're not even her mother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mary. I hadn't worked on it for a while, but you reminded me. So I went home this weekend and I finished it. Oh, hey, terrific. Yeah. Edie read it last night. She was really caught up in it until she fell asleep. <laughs> Just get Hank Snyder for me. I want to collect on that favor. Oh, sure. By the way, Mr. Gramp, what was that favor, anyway? Old Hank wasn't always a big publishing tycoon. He used to own a crummy little bar and grill. But a few years ago, I did something that financed the start of his whole publishing empire. Wow, what was that? I paid my bar tab.